Greetings Guardians, my name is Bife here. So I wanted to talk about something that's unrelated to the lore today. It's more of a discussion about destiny in real terms, but the topic came up more recently, so what the heck, let's talk about this. Recently, the good Sir Paul Tassie of Forbes wrote an article about the idea of a Destiny TV show, and that it'd be a great way of expanding the Destiny universe. Now, I really love the idea as a fan, but critically, I broke it down and I just wasn't sure that it would work. I'll get to why in a second, but I think the major point to be made here is now that I've changed my position after having taken a little time to reflect on this question. So, what did I originally say, and what do I think is still a very valid point with regards to Destiny and why a TV show might not work? Well, the point I was originally making was that Bungie should really focus on getting most of the player base on the same page with the basic story of Destiny before they really look to expand the universe via another piece of media, such as a Netflix show. The original comparison that I made in my series of tweets replying to Paul was between The Witcher and the show that was established on Netflix, which of course is based on the same series of books by Andrzej Sapkowski. And of course, most of you watching this will know that The Witcher of course is a very successful series of games made by CD Projekt Red as well, which is based off of those books. And here's the thing. I'm going to guess that most of you have played the game, if you've heard of it and played the game. You've, however, probably not read the books. And the reason I say that is because the vast majority of my audience here on this channel is English-speaking, and the English versions of the books were published at some time around about 2017. So, yeah, we've not had as much time compared to how long we've had those Witcher games out there. And I also think that, frankly, more people will be reached by the video game than by the book. So... Yeah, there's that. I think it's fair to say, though, that there are some common interpretations that are drawn from both the games and the TV show. Things such as, say, the aesthetic for characters such as Yennefer and Geralt, for example. It's also where fans learned most of what they know about The Witcher. And it's not a game that's light on story to boot. Most of the story in The Witcher isn't as hidden as it would be in Destiny. The key rules of Destiny's world are, at first, kind of obfuscated to be discovered later in things that are much deeper in the lore, at least until more contemporary versions of Destiny and the more recent seasons have been involved. In The Witcher there is also, of course, lore, but the majority of the time, if you're hearing about a terrible monster and its mythical rampage, you're going to stop it before it can conduct its next one. That's the context in which The Witcher thrives. The Witcher and Destiny are both story and lore-rich universes, but The Witcher's fanbase have been presented with story-heavy narratives that have allowed them to gain a cursory understanding of more of the universe, whereas Destiny's presented its players with a narrative that is not as heavy on the story, up until more recent versions at least, and is far more rich in terms of its lore content that it provides up front. Which means there will be fewer players who dive all the way into the story for Destiny because it requires a fair degree of research and understanding because eventually it blends much more quickly from story into lore. This creates for Witcher fans a common threshold of knowledge on the subject. And for most fans, for example, that's going to mean that at baseline they can explain why Geralt, for example, carries two swords, one made of steel and one of silver. This was really the heart of my point when I was talking about my thoughts on a Destiny TV show, and why it might not necessarily work. Destiny fans don't have the same common threshold of understanding of their favourite universe as Witcher fans will of theirs, and that's purely because the games are structured entirely differently from a narrative perspective. Now, let me make this really clear, because I know there are going to be some of you typing this in the comments. If you're watching this video and you're one of my fans, it's worth remembering that you're probably someone who's come to the channel a lot more often than someone who occasionally just falls in here by the accident of the algorithm delivering them to these shores. And if you're hearing me say this and you're saying, well, I understand the deep mechanics and the basics of Destiny's lore both. Well, I hate to say it, but you're kind of the exception that proves the point. You are in fact the fan of the deeper lore that knows how all of this works. Most other players who perhaps just spend a couple of hours on Destiny at the end of the day, or who dedicate all their time to the Crucible or Gambit, are not going to have the same understanding of the game that we do. The knowledge of Destiny players is very varied according to what they do in the game, because it's so vast. In The Witcher, you have realistically one way to play the game, which is single player, you do the story. and. 
I, I guess you can go ahead and play cards too. Yeah, sure. However, in Destiny, you can do all sorts of things, and the Crucible does not require you to understand lore, it just requires you to shoot the mans. And therefore, the common threshold of knowledge about the universe is much, much lower as a result. This is why I stated originally that I wasn't sure if the idea of a Destiny TV show was such a good idea, and to an extent, I still believe that. We have a common threshold of knowledge that is lower than is required for an audience to really grapple onto a TV show in Destiny's universe. Again, that's what I originally thought. But then I decided to test my own hypothesis a little and try to deepen my own understanding of where I stood. And this is where I need to explain where I took a week off work recently to spite the algorithm gods here on YouTube. Not really, please, I need my ad revenue to eat. And decided to use some of the time to binge a Netflix series, namely Castlevania. Now, as a little bit of disclosure for all of this, I've never played the Castlevania games because, well, they were well before my time and I'm not really in a mood to give Konami any money after many of the terrible things they've pulled over the years. No, I watched the TV show instead, because I'd always heard good things about it, but never had the time. Four seasons later, having finished it, with zero understanding of Castlevania's story or lore from the beginning, I think I want to adjust my position a bit. You can now color me a fan of this show. I'm just incredibly sad that over four seasons, it's now finished, at least I presume it is, considering that all of the narrative arcs have come to a close. The show is supported by a phenomenal cast of characters and a really rich universe, which has its own really neatly developed take on the typical vampire theme. If you're looking at the cast in particular, heck, Lance Reddick and Bill Nye, who also have previously worked on Destiny, are in this show. And they do a pretty fantastic job about it, too. The nice thing is that whilst watching the show, I didn't need to understand any of it beforehand in order to actually get any of it, and that was the incredible strength of the show. Even bits and pieces such as the moment where the mechanics of how Forge Masters create night creatures didn't feel like they were totally forced, because when moments like that are explained, the plot creates an appropriate opening to explain the mechanics, and it's contextually relevant considering the motivations of the characters involved. Heck, if you want an even simpler one, let's take a look at the idea of how salt in that universe kills demons. They have a very simple reason as to why that's going to come up. And it's involved quite simply. So, it makes a lot of sense when you hear it from that perspective, and it doesn't feel like you're being dragged along with exposition and explanation. It feels like an actionable Chekhov's gun. The universe does a very good job of fundamentally communicating its rules in the TV show, and it also holds that air of foreboding mystery ahead of each of the new threats that hasn't yet been unveiled. And so, it feels known enough where I felt comfortable, and yet unknown enough that it was still consistently able to surprise and delight me. However, I still don't think my position is completely wrong. I think the reason I can adequately say that even after having described why Castlevania worked, it's because of the simple fact that when you show someone a picture of Dracula, they're most likely going to know that it's Dracula. When I show someone a picture of a Guardian, it just doesn't have the same effect. Castlevania gets away with having a universe where I need to learn a little bit more, and yet I can engage with it because the themes of the show center around something that we all know at least a little bit about, which is the mythos of vampires and the themes of gothic horror and fantasy generally. So if you're going to go ahead and take a look at what that is, Yep, we're back at that idea of a common threshold of knowledge. This common idea of what people hold in mind. Again, it's the thing of if you show someone a picture of Dracula, they know that it is Dracula. But if you show someone a picture of a guardian, they might say, is that Master Chief? Hmm, who is that? Oh, it's not Master Chief, it's just a titan with green armor. This is the moment where I think I can amend what I originally stated to basically say that Yes, Destiny is still going to have a little trouble getting the same amount of people following on when it comes to their storytelling, because once again, we have that low base threshold of knowledge in Destiny's player base. Expand that out a little bit and think of the problem that that creates when it comes to trying to present Destiny to a population that just watches TV and has never heard of it, let alone played it. It's moments like this where you can take a look at The Witcher and see why it was successful. A part of that is definitely because of the rabid fanbase for The Witcher that has loved all of the books and predominantly, I think it's fair to say, the games. 
but I think it's fair to say that it's also partly due to the fact that it grounds itself and its story in medieval fantasy, with wizards, dragons, monsters, or even just the simple elements of the aristocracy and the peasantry that you'd see in the Middle Ages. People understand the framework that The Witcher sits within, and even if it is very different from most typical medieval fantasies, even if it's a lot grittier and grungier, and even if the beasts and monsters that are fought in that show are a lot less similar to the typical Western ideas of those monsters, it's still very much the case that it has that typical grounding. When people sit there and see someone who's a knight in shining armor, they kind of get where the story is going. When people see a wizard, they kind of understand what's going on. People understand that framework, and Destiny's framework doesn't always convey those elements. But you see, sometimes it does, just a lot more subtly. And this is where I think Destiny has its shot. Destiny's one big advantage in these terms is that it draws a huge amount of its storytelling and themes from things that are found in mythology from all over the world. Whether it's ancient Egyptian religious figures such as Osiris being directly name-dropped as characters, or whether the more obscure references that are found throughout the lore are in question, Destiny ends up being a little recognizable in some way to almost everyone, no matter where they're from. There are elements in Destiny that in a real sense can appeal to everyone, and Destiny pulls a lot from the themes of the world that it's based in, our real world. So it does have that advantage. So I suppose the real challenge for a Destiny TV show is to be a foundation. It's to be something that has enough thematic grounding for people to not feel lost, while also having enough interesting bits of critical lore to ground us all in the elements of Destiny's universe and its unique quirks. So, what are the top contenders that let us do this? What introduces us to the basics of Destiny, but also presents a front that most people can grapple with and kind of understand? Well, Destiny is set in a post-apocalypse, but ultimately, I don't necessarily know if that's the exact theme to lean into. If you want my own personal opinion, I believe the right place to start with this is with the Iron Lords. The Iron Lords have always been seen as Destiny's group of heraldic knights that span out across the old tracts of Earth, and they have, for the longest time in story terms, been an open analogy for King Arthur's Knights of the Round Table. Whether you're looking at Yolder as the equivalent of Lancelot, or Radagast as the quieter, first among equals version of King Arthur, Scory as the hypothetical Merlin, or even maybe Felwinter as a strange kind of stand-in for Mordred, that character that ends up being their doom, it's hard not to see all of these different guardians as analogous to the heroes of the mythos of Old Albion. What's more, the Iron Lords ground us all in something that can be appropriately displayed in a variety of cultures, which is that sort of medieval theming of some kind in that aesthetic from many different nations. You can take a look at a whole variety of different armor sets from the Iron Banner, and whether it's the kind of Japanese warring states period samurai and shogun type armor, or whether it's the more typical Western Crusaders look, I think that there's a lot that can really ground people in a theme that they can then get their heads around. If you present this as the Knights of the Round Table in a post-apocalypse, I feel as though you have this potential for everybody here to suddenly get around and get to grips with destiny. And then you can present everybody with the more key ideas of destiny itself. In fact, the time period of the Iron Lords also happens to be at the beginning of the Dark Age, which is narratively a bit of an appropriate beginning for the time of the Lightbearers. So it's a sort of origin story type era that Destiny could really use to its advantage if a story was going to be told there. It allows the characters to get to grips with their new reality, just as new audience members get to grips with them too. The first time a ghost dies and people realize that they're what grants Guardians immortality and power, the characters on screen are going through those same emotions. The first time that somebody who is a Guardian dies and then gets resurrected, the audience gets that same surge of, oh my! Suddenly this is happening. So, yeah, those are my thoughts. If Destiny is going to have a TV show, they should double down on the Iron Lords, I think, and they should really try to nail some of their stories so that people can be grounded and can learn about a universe in a manner that doesn't feel forced, in a way that raises, or at very least creates an opening to the common base knowledge of Destiny that will then become more familiar as time goes on. But again, that's just my opinion. 
What do you guys think? When do you think we should set a Destiny TV show? And do you think that there is a possibility that one could work? If you have any thoughts of your own, go ahead and leave your thoughts down below in the comments section. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you want more Destiny content, particularly talking about the lore of the game, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell next to subscribe to turn on those email notifications. But as per usual, know that your viewership is quite enough for me. And that in the meantime, my name has been, my name is Bife. Purudasia Adastra. I'll see you, Starside.